So here's a look at this cylinder head up close. I'm pretty happy actually with how it came out. It's sealed really well. It's working really well. And uh, I'm gonna roll with it. I'm going with it. As you guys know, it started out from a block. Uh, this one has the hole all the way through. This one doesn't. The only bummer is that this threaded hole happened to be right where I needed to cut it. So, uh, you know, if I were doing this for a show compressor, uh, I probably would not have used this. But it doesn't matter. It's perfect. It works perfect. Let me see. I have another one. Oh, yeah. See, so here's the other one. This, I have one more of these laying around here somewhere. The hole only goes part of the way through. But, that, as so... Yeah, doesn't everybody have a block of aluminum laying around? Or two or three, or in my case, I had four. And, uh, originally, I was looking at this. I was going to use some plate. I have some half-inch aluminum plate. Uh, but it was just too thin for me to get everything to work right. I was just going to have the uh, exhaust port come straight up and just thread it straight up. But, um, yeah, I've got a couple of these. Uh, it's just stuff I have laying around here is just ridiculous. Um, never taking you guys on a full tour of my metal inventory, but it sure varies. And yeah, Jeff, I know you watched this video and you made a comment about brass. And yeah, brass would be sweet. I don't happen to have a block of brass, but brass would have been sweet. And I was half tempted to polish this. Uh, I thought, man, I could polish his head and make it look really cool. And then uh, I kicked myself in the nuts really hard for myself and said, dude, it's just a compressor for a friggin' air horn. Uh, and it's going to be used for you know work stuff at the ranch or any portable air support air supply I need it's ultimately going to fill this scuba tank right here and my theory at least in my head and that's the fun thing about YouTube is I could sit here and, and I, I you see how my brain works and my brain always works it's never off uh, you can ask anybody that knows me and man the minute I wake up in the morning I'm, my head is swirling with ideas and things and stuff I want to do and projects I want to get done and when I go to bed at night my head is swirling with things and and stuff I want to do and projects I want to get done and it's never a quiet place inside my brain uh, so I got to get this done and I got to move on because you know, I got other things I want to get done but uh, this I just wanted to show you up close and personal how this thing is and so polishing is out right this is not going to work i'm going to build some kind of caddy where this sits on top of this scuba bottle here this one uh, with a handle that i can pick up and carry around this is going to be plumbed into a manifold uh, that will allow me to have a service airport air port not airport where airplanes go but a service air port uh, a gauge and then a fill for that and then obviously air out to um to the air horns, uh, my plumbed in line. And when I get all that going on the Suburban, I'm not gonna load this video up with a bunch of a bunch of different random stuff on this whole air horn system, but I think I've got it pretty well planned out. And I'm gonna kinda keep this video just specific to the compressor, to the compressor. And then I'll start getting into uh, the next couple of videos. I'll start talking about my choice of airlines and uh, the air horns that I have and how I came about having them in my possession uh, and then the air valve I'm going to use and blah, blah, blah. But today, compressor, solid and sick. And uh, I was going to pull this off, right? And I thought, yeah, I'm going to kind of mill these out or sand these out. I don't have a mill. I don't have a lathe. Uh, the shop that I used to have access to using that stuff about three years ago closed up. So I've been kind of on a soft search to come across a lathe first and then a mill second. Uh, if I can get a combination unit, I think that would be all right. They don't always tend to work well um, on a smaller scale. I can't get a huge lathe, but uh, anyway, um, I'm not taking this apart. And there's a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't see any benefit to to kind of cleaning these edges up. And uh, everything seals really well right now. All this, the head gasket worked perfectly the first time. The exhaust port worked perfectly the first time. The pressure side works perfectly the first time. You'll see here that there's no more silicone here. Uh, I want this to be a long-term compressor that I don't ever have to think about again. So I took the burned diaphragm, burned or burnt, burned, the one that I TIG welded and boofed. So we'll get rid of that one. And uh, I tried it with a bicycle inner tube 
an old inner tube I had laying around here. Well, it wasn't old, old. It just was had a, a big tear in it. Um, and the rubber seems to be holding really well. So I made a new one out of that. Uh, silicone is gone. I'm going to leave this block um, machined and milled as it sits. I thought I would cut grooves into the top here to make cooling fins. This is the exhaust port. And then I thought, oh, man, I'll drill this hole bigger. Put that little velocity stack so I can have an air filter on there. But then the more I looked at this, um, I just don't think it's feasible I don't want to screw this head up at this point and I think it's not feasible for me to cut decent cooling grooves into this without a mill without a controlled cutting device such as a mill because uh, you remember the exhaust port comes up about here it comes up about 50 percent of the way up here and then it shoots across this way now the original hole is about um, I think a quarter of an inch I think it's a quarter inch size and then these holes ended up being 7 16ths of an inch. So this is pretty big, right? So if I were to be able to cut any fins into this, it would have to come across the top. And I've got an air line, uh, you know, the air, bo the bore that I made here where the air goes out. And uh, I just don't think I feel comfortable cutting in there uh, with what, you know. I have a rotary cutoff saw where the metal blade, uh, one specifically for non-ferrous metals, uh, but that is, you know, a circular saw type deal, and I just screw it. Screw it, right? So why take the head off if you're not going to cut holes? And then I decided I'm not going to drill a hole here for the air filter, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But uh, so after I decided no cooling fins, uh, I figured, oh, man, I could come in and I could drill some holes. I would drill a hole all the way down to here. i drill a hole all the way down to here, and then I would tie it in in the back. And I have a 12, I do have a 12 volt uh, closed system, cooling system. And I thought, oh man, I can make a water cooled head. That would be sick. Uh, and then I promptly uh, kicked myself in the nuts for myself because that's just more stupid work that uh, I think would have marginal results. And um, quite honestly, I think just the thickness of this thing, this is like an inch and a half thick. Okay, um, I just fell over. <laughs> My boots fell off. Uh, excuse me, it's an inch and an eighth. So it's an inch and an eighth by two and a half at the base. You see it tapers in slightly at the top. It's uh, two and one, two, three, two and three eighths at the t at the top there. Two and five eighths at the bottom. It's an inch and an eighth thick. Oh, and it is uh, turned out to be an inch and a half wide. That's better. Okay, so. The water cooling head turned out to be a bust. That was kind of dumb. That wasn't going to work. So then uh, I think I had mentioned it before. I said, well, I'll just get a computer fan, right? I've got one of these brushless 12-volt fans. Uh, i got a whole stack of these. Uh, for some dumb reason, I don't like throwing these things away when they work. And I said, well, I could build a little bracket, right? I could build a bracket, and I could run the power for this into here and have it turn on and off with the compressor. Because while I think this will dissipate heat, I think that compressed air gets stuff hot. And if, if I have a feeling I'm going to be using these horns because I think they're cool a lot, I think this thing's going to be running a lot. Um, so I thought, man, I could just put a, a little bitty fan, you know, well, it's not little bitty, but put one of these fans right here, cool everything down, and we'd be all scooby. But then, you know, that's just, that's some big piece of crap that's got to sit all the way out to here. So then I didn't quite kick myself in the nuts for myself, but I said, well, I can improve on this. I can improve on this. So what will I do? I said, well, I got one of these heat sinks on an aluminum heat sink that came off the processor of a computer. And I thought, oh man, I could set that like that, right? I could figure out a way to screw it down. Um, it's got holes already in it, right? So I drill a little hole in here and I tap it and I'd stick that sucker on there and it would act as cooling fins. And I thought, okay, that's, that's the way to go, right? Probably like this. And I said, yep, yep, yep. The heat will transfer from aluminum to aluminum, no problem. If I really wanted to get funky, I could put that little uh, grease crap that they put on um, you know these to begin with that help I don't even know what it's called right now because I'm not a computer nerd but it's got that crap on there that helps conduct the heat and uh, you know I would just drill a little hole into here to accommodate the, the intake port of this cylinder head and we'd be all scooby so then my neighbor stops by while I'm in this heat sink oh, I'll just make a heat sink and then I'm digging through all my stuff to find different kinds of heat sinks that I have something might look kind of cool uh, and whatnot, and my neighbor says, I got you one better. I'll be right back. So he goes home, and dude comes back with uh, this. Hold on, let me, let me get it right here. He, I, this heat sink. And he's like, bro, I got the heat sink for you, bro. So I ran it on the belt sander. I said, that's perfect. 
I already drilled a notch, uh, drilled and cut a little notchy poo in here, which, which perfectly will set over. See, there's the intake, uh, right there. And then when you run this thing down the center, it holds like that, right? And then this way, I can still take a piece of foam, similar to the foam I had in the velocity stack, stick it in between these two pieces here, and that'll allow a little bit of air filtration to keep, uh, you know, small children and fingers and stuff from going in there. Um, yeah. Okay. So. I said, well, well, how how can I make this attach onto here? So, I made these. Uh, these means plural, right? These, these are um, chrome over steel pieces of wire that came off an oven rack. <laughs> I know, right? Beekeeper, why do you have an oven rack in your house? Well, I don't know. I'm stupid. So you do this, right? So I made them so they perfectly conform to the head, and you can come in here like this. And you clip it on on the back like that and you come in here and you clip it and they're, they're a little bit tight so they'll hold into place and then yeah yeah right right that's a big old piece of aluminum on the top i think it looks kind of decent uh and it's done and it should dissipate a lot of heat and then uh my my friend who who brought this is kind of a joker and he because he's he's that kind of guy and then after i get this figured out and sit down he goes oh yeah hey, uh, and there's another part to it i said yeah what's the other part and he says oh little fan now that is sick because that combines the best of both worlds so i took this little fan and uh, i ran some i threw some graphite in there to make it uh, nice and, and luby and then once i get this permanently fixed i'm gonna sit this uh like this can you guys see that? Am I good? Oh, here we go. I'm going to, uh, the screws are right here. You can see there's the little screws. There's screws, and I'm going to screw this down so it sits like this. Hell yeah. And I'm going to take this wire, and I'm going to stick it inside here, and I'm going to make it turn on and off with a compressor. And it's going to have an air-cooled little cylinder head there. And that's sick. That's high-performance stuff right there, Daddy-O. That's carbon fiber reeds. That is just mud-throwing CR500 kind of stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome power right there. Boys and girls, you are about ready to uh, hurt your eardrums because I'm going to have me some some truck horns in my truck here right the right quick. Okay, that is that. I'm going to put this together. My next video, um, I'm going to run some before and after heat test just for uh, shits and griggles. Griggles? Griggles. I'm going to take this and plumb that into this, and I'm going to see how long it takes this to fill that from a dead empty, and then I'm going to use my little infrared thermometer. And I'm going to see how hot this gets, and then I'm going to run it with the fan, and I'm going to see if it actually makes a difference, or if I'm like a tweaker on glue. Okay, I got fresh oil in here too. It calls for uh, ATF, a light grade oil. Like ATF, if you're using it for service air, if you're using it for a compressed air system in a motorhome, they recommend that you use a mineral oil um, so it doesn't stank up your water uh, when it's because uh, you are going to get some little bit of oil from here finding its way into your outside. So. Fresh oil, a, a fresh diaphragm, a super sick, sweet, awesome head with now a little air-cooled uh, fan, uh, air-cooled chingus, and that's just awesome. All right, ladies and germs, I got to run. I'm being beckoned. I'm being beckoned. It's chow time. It's chow time. I'm a little rummy right now because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Hungry, hungry, but I like it. I like it. Okay, next video will be this thing getting hot. All right, got to go. See you.